Ha! What's going on? Oh, nothing. Doop be doop be doop be doop be doop. Ha! Idea, but I want to get out of here. Me too. It seems to be some kind of asylum. This must be a misunderstanding. Who the heck are you? And um, what? You can speak? I'm your buddy, Harvey. It's a shame you don't recognize me. I'll help you get out of here and try to restore your memory. How's it going, Harv? I'd be much better if we were out of here already. Go and have a look around then. Maybe I can find a way out of here. Hello? Hello? Can anybody hear me? What do you want? I want out of here. Forget it. What kind of way is that to treat a guest? We won't give up that easily, will we? Hey? Hello? Don't make so much noise in there. What do you want? Where am I? Honey, if I answered that question every time one of you loonies asked me, I wouldn't even have time to go to the bathroom anymore. <laughs> Listen, honey, I'm not paid for talking. Anything else? Who am I? You are by far the most annoying patient I've ever had to guard. Patient? Am I sick then? I certainly don't feel sick. Listen, sweetie, you're in a room with padded walls. Why don't you try to figure it out for yourself? I'm not insane. Isn't that so, Harvey? Right, she isn't insane. Do you hear? Harvey agrees. <laughs> you really are an odd couple, the both of you. <laughs> Why can't I remember anything? I'm not going to explain that to you yet again. Only so you can forget it during your next treatment again. Why is it so hot in here? That might be due to the air conditioner being turned off. What air conditioner? There's no air conditioner in here. <laughs> Do you think the doctor is stupid enough to have an exposed ventilation shaft in your cell? <laughs> the air conditioner is hidden behind the padding, of course. Is that so? An air conditioner behind the padding? That does make much more sense, of course. Can you turn on the AC for me, please? I'll have to think about that. If you keep quiet from now on, maybe... later. I couldn't help but notice how skillfully you're guarding this door. Ah, you noticed that, eh? So you might have also noticed that I have my own technique. I developed it at the last tournament. Yep. Really? So you're a famous athlete? Do you play on a team or something? Oh, <laughs> I... well, I play golf. Mini golf. Yep. And I bet Mommy bought the club for you. Ha! Do you think that a Babbitt and Son can be bought in just any store? Where did you get it? Did you steal it? I think this is all very exciting. Watch your mouth! I've never stolen anything in my life. Where did you get it then? Is it from the junkyard? You can find the most curious things there. Watch your mouth! 
Nobody throws out a gem like a Babbitt and Son. Where did you get it then? Did you carve it from a whale's jawbone? Ha! The whale has yet to be born! Whose jawbone can compete with the impact of a genuine Babbitt and Son? I give up. Where did you get it? My father made it for me. Jeffrey Francis von Babbitt Sr. Really? As he lay on his deathbed with shaking hands, he handed over his own Babbitt and Son titanium seven iron. <laughs> his lucky club. He told me to use it like he taught me. That sounds like one of those sophisticated father and son relationships. Yes. My father was a very sophisticated man. He was so suave that he always wore a tuxedo. Sometimes at night, I even put on his top hat, just to find out how it felt to be as debonair as my father. Do you mean that kind of sophisticated? Um... Well... Anyway, thanks for sharing this completely useless information with me. You're a real daddy's boy, aren't you? My father was a great man. And an incredible mini-golfer, I'm sure. Yep. I wonder if my father was a mini-golfer, too. What did you say, sweetheart? Your father was many things, but mini-golfer wasn't one of them. <laughs> what do you know about him? There are things that are better left in the past. <laughs> oh, boy. Father a mini golfer. That really cracks me up. <laughs> Thanks for the laugh. <laughs> Is that all? Or do you want to know anything else? Why don't you take your daddy's club and whack it across your skull? <laughs> You're mean. <laughs> My poor father. Just you wait. I hope you suffocate in there. You can forget about me turning on the AC for you. Let's see how detachable this chair leg really is. That didn't do much now, did it? If only I had something pointy. That didn't do much now, did it? If only I had something pointy. Oops. I broke my chair leg. Yeah, baby. Let's trash the whole place. What is it this time? Can you turn on the AC for me, please? I'll have to think about that. If you keep quiet from now on, maybe... later. I'd like to know more about mini-golf. Well, who doesn't? Have I already told you that I play in the professional league? Yep. Could you let me out and show me some of your golf skills? You know full well Dr. Marcel forbids that. If you're just trying to annoy me, I'll come in and play some mini golf on you. Tell me more about your club. I've already told you everything about it. My father gave it to me. Yep, yep, yeah. A formidable man. Uh, you know what? I'm not the least bit interested in your father. Hey, show a little more respect, will ya? I could get rather touchy when somebody is trash-talking my father. He taught me everything I know about mini-golf. Tell me more about your father. Ah, <sighs> my father. Jeffrey Francis von Babbitt Sr. Yep, yep, yeah. A formidable man. Uh, you know what? I'm not the least bit interested in your father. Hey! Show a little more respect, will ya? I could get rather touchy when somebody is trash-talking my father. He taught me everything I know about mini-golf. 
mini golf? I'm getting all dizzy. And with good reason, sweetheart. You know what? I'll turn on the AC for you. You can cool off a bit that way. There's a draft coming from behind this gap. I can't unscrew it without some kind of tool. Huh. You used to know how way back when. What do you mean? You used to be able to loosen screws with no tool before. That's what I mean. I could just cry, Harvey. I can't loosen these screws. Aw, oh, come on. You should be able to eat screws like that for breakfast. That certainly wouldn't have stopped you when you were little. What do you mean by that? Well, you used to be able to pull off a pretty cool trick. Could I juggle burning chainsaws? Not exactly that, but a couple of stupid screws would never have been an obstacle for you. I must have been an extra laid-back kid. What else do you know? Um, that isn't how it works. Just remember, I'm a projection of your subconscious. Nobody's perfect. I can give your memory a boost. But you'll have to show me things that remind you of your childhood. Like the screws? Exactamundo! And then? Then I'll tempo morph us to the past. Cool. I'm ready, Harvey. Shall I tempo morph you to the past now? Yeah. Tempo morph me to the past. As you wish. Hold on! So this is the past? It looks like our old basement at least. And look at me! I'm young! We've jumped back about ten years! Don't I have to be careful now that I don't run over my own grandpa or something? No more than usual. We're just observing your memory here. Ah, I see. So I don't have to be careful in case I step on some dinosaur eggs. Not if you can find any. I know what day this is. My father locked me up in the basement because I teased the neighbor's boy. His name was... Albert, or... Alfred. Alfred Marcel. Alfred Marcel? Like in Dr. Marcel? Oh no! You better believe it! He's the son of the doctor in charge of the asylum. Whoa. But this shouldn't be a concern for us. We're here to teach you the art of loosening screws without a tool. All right, then. Hmm. I have to get my bearings first. I'll go first, if you don't mind. We can take turns, okay? Okay. A jar full of rusty nails. Hmm, this is interesting. The screws keep this plate in place. I remember, it's all coming back to me. Edna was able to loosen the screws. All I have to figure out now is exactly how she did it. You could open the door with it, if it wasn't locked. This is the last piece in this puzzle. I'm sure of it. Hmm, this is interesting. The screws keep this plate in place. I remember. It's all coming back to me. Edna was able to loosen the screws. All I have to figure out now is exactly how she did it. This is the last piece in this puzzle. I'm sure of it. Hey, Edna, I found some screws. I know now. You have to loosen these screws to get out of here. That doesn't really help us much, does it? 
Now we've got the same problem as the one in the present. All right. I'll have another look around. I promise you I'll get us out of here. I wonder if Edna can use this thing. Can you reach the window with a rake? Hmm. This almost sounds like it could work. I could give it a try, if you let me. Can you reach the window with a rake? Hmm. This almost sounds like it could work. I could give it a try, if you let me. Just for a second? Yeah, I think I can manage. Oh, there's somebody sitting there! The guy on the left is Mattis, Edna's father. But on the right, hey! Isn't that Alfred Marcel? That's the son of Dr. Marcel, the head of the asylum! Edna had to play with him a lot back then. But why is he sitting here eating ice cream with Mattis when Edna's locked inside? I don't get it! It says that the chestnut burglar has escaped again. We'll have to watch our chestnuts closely now. Just a second? This is interesting. It says he escaped by using a chewed-off toenail. Hmm. The chestnut burglar has escaped again. Maybe Edna can learn something from him. Guess what? The chestnut burglar has escaped again! Oh no! Not again! Last time he took three trees in our street alone! Police are saying that he escaped using a chewed-off toenail. Really? Hmm... A gnawed-off toenail shouldn't be hard to come by. And now? curious to see if this is going to work. I can't believe it. It really did work. The latch isn't held by the panel anymore. I can just open the door. This really is our old kitchen. I can't wait to go on exploring my past. No, not yet. just about to come back to me. I'm sorry. This was all I could remember. At least you learned how to loosen screws. Right. Thanks, Harvey. Where would I be without you? I can't remember what I was supposed to do with these screws, Harvey. Use your new ability! Hey! Hello? Well, sweetheart, what is it now? I'd like to know more about mini-golf. Well, who doesn't? 
Have I already told you that I play in the professional league? Yep. Tell me more about your father. Ah, <sighs> my father. Jeffrey Francis von Babbitt Sr. Yep, yep, yep. A formidable man. Why don't you take your daddy's club and whack it across your skull? <laughs> You're mean. <laughs> my poor father. Just you wait. Let's see if you're still laughing when I turn the AC back off. I think if I apply a little bit of force, I can pry it out of its casing. Help a lady out here, will you, Harvey? And... Ugh. This Edna is a real challenge, Holgor. That's Dr. Marcel's voice. It's coming from beyond this grate. Quick, maybe we can listen in on what they're saying. What do you mean by that, Dr. Marcel? I'm at the end of my tether. It's been ten years, and she can still remember. You're afraid she might find out what really happened back then? Pah! Nobody will believe her. Who's gonna believe a loony? The daughter of a convicted murderer. So why are you worried? I'm not worried. I just hate her resistance. I can't believe what I'm hearing. My dad? A murderer? There's something rotten in the state of Denmark. Yeah, this Dr. Marcel is hiding something. As soon as we're out of here, we'll have to clear the good name of my father. Dr. Marcel and Hulger are gone. Well, here we go again. I'm starting to get the hang of this. A framed newspaper clip over the mantelpiece. That seems to be important. Now, what is this? That's my father right there in the picture. This article states my father is a murderer. That is a horrendous lie! That's definitely Dr. Marcel's distinct signature. A polo mallet. Yikes! Well, if it isn't Miss Edna, how did you manage to get out of your cell? I had to go to the bathroom and got lost. Oh. Come to Ulgor, and I'll show you the way. The way back to your cell. Ha! Never! Ha! Never! You can't hide behind the desk forever. We'll see about that. Yes, I should get rid of him, but where to put him? Ah, I know, the cabinet! Uh, hello? Hello, Edna. What brings you here? Who 
or what are you? I am a brain in a jar. But you can call me Bobo, if you like. Like Bobo the bear? No, more like Bobo bombastic, bodacious, bodelicious, gonna smack you to the ground. You're able to talk? Of course not, stupid. Do you see a mouth anywhere? I communicate telepathically. Clearly you do. Do you know a way out of here? Why do people always think that brains in jars always have the answers for everything? No, I don't know a way out of here. I don't travel much, you know. Do you know anything about Dr. Marcel? Beware the evil doctor. He's evil. Evil. I hate it when I get so agitated. Ciao, Bobo. It looks like an ice skater with a broken leg. At the same time, not far away. Stay tuned for another mind-blowing story about people with big... What the... Not again. Why don't we get cable here? Ah, uh, so what? I'll just go back to watching the Looney Show. I can't open it without my special tool. Yes, folks, it's time once again for Edna Conrad and her dancing toenails. It loses some of its appeal trying to get in instead of out. I better skedaddle. Wait, you little brat! <laughs> What's the meaning of this? Come back here at once! You'll break every bone in your body! Why don't you come and get me? Well... Oh, isn't that cute? Our mini-golf professional has a fear of heights. Coward, coward. Yeah, you just laugh. But eventually, you'll have to come down from there. And that's when I'll show you. <laughs> now the handle can't be pushed down anymore. What the? Hey! What's going on? I'm still in here! Hello! Hogor! Dr. Marcel! Somebody!
someone sitting there. Is that you, newbie? Yeah, I'm the newbie. Who else? Everyone else knows not to bother me right now. Listen, don't disturb me, okay? This is not a piece of furniture. It's Dr. Marcel's brain liquefier. I'd need help from someone who knows his way around these things. Hello? Hello? Hmm. No reaction. It's prohibited to pass through here. I'm just visiting. Always the same witty remarks, Miss Edna. Maybe the doctor should be less thorough when erasing your memory. You always come up with the same old tricks. What else you got for me? You have a special permit? You're the newbie? Or no, wait. You're not really even there, right? Um... I'm really fed up with you. Alarm! Patient on the run! What's going on? What do you think? There's a patient on the run! Where are all the others? Aren't Babbitt and Holger around? Isn't that something you should know? I've been sitting here all day. I don't know what else is going on, but obviously the whole building is in chaos since the doctor went out. It's just, uh, I've never dealt with an attempted escape before. <sighs> alright, alright, I'll just put her in here with the others. That must be what I'm supposed to do. There. You stay here till the doctor is back. Something seems to have gone patently wrong here. Tickets, please. Tickets? I don't even see a train. That's because there is no train. So what do I need a ticket for? It doesn't make sense. Hold your horses. The ticket is for the laundry lift system, of course. The laundry lift goes through the whole house. There are stops in the basement, on the second floor, and here, on the first floor. I want to buy a ticket, please. <laughs> That's a good one. Tickets are highly sought-after items in this house. There are only a handful available. And you'll be getting one only after hell freezes over. So how do I get a ticket? This is completely illogical. The system is airtight. I made it myself. And it's foolproof. So there simply must be a way to get a ticket. There is. All contingencies have been accounted for. Everybody gets a ride when it's their turn. But there isn't even a waiting line. Wouldn't it make sense to go and look for it then? Instead of standing around here and blocking the line? Whose turn is it next? Number uh, two will be next. And who is number two? You better ask them that yourself. I'm not giving any information about passengers. 
Who is in possession of a ticket, if you don't mind telling me? <laughs> there are lots of tickets in circulation. Mr. Frock has one. He holds a season ticket, and he's our most frequent customer. Which means he lives in the laundry lift. Professor Nock has another ticket. He often visits his Peruvian amber mines, meaning the ones found on the ground floor. Aloman has the third ticket. I'm uh, considering withdrawing it. He doesn't use it according to the rules. Okay. And who else owns a ticket? You said there are many tickets circulating. Yes. Uh, why? Uh, isn't that a lot? Your system is totally illogical. <laughs> the system is as airtight as a submarine. It's always the next person in line who's up. But it's my turn now. In that case, it should be easy to show me your ticket. Is there any way that someone besides the three people you mentioned can use the laundry lift? I mean, what about, say, ticket number four? Don't give me this modern mumbo-jumbo. We use the good old traditional numbers here. One, two, and, uh, well, well, the third one. The one which is neither one nor two. Hi there. Tickets, please. What's the problem with that nervous guy in the corner over there? Uh, don't pay attention to him. I've been yelling at him to stop being so nervous all the time. But do you think he'll listen to me? <laughs> Maybe the man would be less nervous if you stopped yelling at him. What? You mean he acts like that because of me? Now that is... Hey! You! You'd better act as if I wasn't here! Otherwise I'll come over there! And then it's ass-whooping time! Hello? Druggle Jug. Is that your name? Druggle Jug. Am I not allowed in there? Druggle Jug. But I need to be granted an audience with the king. Druggle Jug. Too bad. <sighs> what a guy. If only I could impress him somehow. Hello? Hello, young lady. Wait. Stay there. There's no doubt. You're different from the others. Your aura is highly energetic. Who are you? Where do you come from? I'm Edna. It's not important where I come from. The important thing is, I want to get out of here. Yes. Your impulse for freedom is very strong. Your chi doesn't only flow. It gushes. You have been reprimanded far too often. You have been hindered far too long. The levees are about to break. The volcano is about to erupt. Wow, those are good guesses. What brings you here, Edna? Who are you? My name ceased to be of importance long ago. The moment I inherited the wisdom of the cosmos, I decided to abandon all ties to my former existence. I am known as the Aluman now. You loonies love to refer to yourselves only by your characteristics, don't you? It's just easier to memorize. What is it exactly that you're doing here? I'm checking the flow of the chi for holes. Why are you doing that? Well, somebody has to do it. You can't just walk about with holes in your chi now, can you? The whole yin might be flooded by yang, and you can kiss the feng shui goodbye. Why are you dressed that way? The aluminum enhances my astral conductivity. This way I'm always in touch with the essential. And the A on your chest? That is not an A. It is the Earth Rune. 
It connects me with Gaia, the Earth Goddess. And the diving goggles? It protects me from chlorine. What did you think? Who lives in the Cushion Castle? That would be King Adrian. Quite an interesting case. He got struck by lightning and developed certain abilities after that. In fact, his case supports some of my theories. What exactly are those theories? I have developed a couple of theories regarding Adrian's case. After lightning struck him, he suddenly had psychic abilities. I don't know exactly how to name my theory. I'm considering psychokinetic conductivity through electric currents, electrostatic psi extension, high voltage precognition, or just Fortune doesn't always favor fools. What abilities are those? He sees things before they happen. Wow! No wonder he's your king. He must be very powerful then. Indeed he is. He always wins at Chinese checkers that way. Yeah, yeah. But in addition to that... And at Scrabble. But the possibilities... You said it. The recreation room is full of board games. And Adrian wins them all. He even won the jigsaw puzzle contest. The prize was a medal of real gold. Why do you call him King? Well, that was the wager in a game of Yahtzee. We were naive enough to think we could beat him. B-Man had worked out a strategy. The ticket inspector developed a fail-safe system. Professor Nock supplied us with the medication. He had scraped together everything he could get his hands on for one whole year, just for the occasion. Petra even designed a special choreography for us to follow. Alas, it was to no avail. Well, we could have done worse. Imagine if Petra had won Pilates every morning. Ooh. Let's talk about something else. Do you know a way out of here? Outside and inside are just two aspects of the same circumstance. Like the two sides of a coin. Neither be inside nor outside, Edna. Just be. Your coat hanger tells you all that? Why no? It serves as an aerial to pick up cosmic oscillations. Plus, I'm keeping it handy just in case. An aluminum suit is very prone to wrinkling, you know. Can I have the coat hanger? Normally, I despise the concept of material possessions. But the coat hanger is essential to me, I'm afraid. For one thing, it is my aerial that connects me to the ethereal realm. I'm also keeping it handy just in case. An aluminum suit is very prone to wrinkling, you know. I have to get a move on. Take care of your karma. Hello? Hello! Hold on a second. Yes? Do you want anything in particular? Can you get off the phone for a sec? Certainly not. That's my broker on the line. We're talking millions here. Can I borrow your telephone? Absolutely not. This phone is my lifeline. I don't dare think about what could happen if I was unavailable. Just imagine me putting that thing away for a minute. When my wife is shouting, Look, Brucie, it's a boy, for example. Or worse still, imagine, during that brief distraction, when I look over to my wife, my stock portfolio goes into free fall. I would lose billions because I hadn't been on the phone just for a tiny little instant. One moment of carelessness and my whole life is in ruins. 
You don't happen to know a way out of here, do you? No, but, but you don't want to get out of here, believe me. The world outside is a cruel place. Mistakes you make out there have real consequences. You could lose billions of dollars. Let's say only because you were distracted for ti tiny, a uh, little, ti tiny little moment. When your wife is shouting, look, Brucey, it's a boy. For example, that kind of guilt will haunt you for the rest of your life. Not really important. Go on with your phone call. I was planning to do that anyway. Hello? You still there? Hello. Hey, you don't have to hide from me. How can I be sure? You could be a velociraptor in disguise. I'm Edna. I am Professor Nock. Pleased to meet you. What are you doing back there? I am doing research in the field of paleontology. Behind the armchair? Where else would I be? You won't find a prehistoric skeleton lying in the middle of the room. It would have been recovered a long time ago. That makes sense. Are you one of those mad scientists? I beg your pardon? Who do you think you are? Oh, the use nowadays. They see a man with white hair crouching behind an armchair in an asylum, and they jump to the mad scientist stereotype at once. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult you. May I please change the channel? By no means. I need to know how this ends. The fate of mankind depends on it. The dinosaurs become extinct. That can't be. They're just pretending to lull us into a false sense of security. I wonder what they're up to. Are they secretly planning to melt the polar ice caps? Hmm, you can change the channel. I need to make preparations. Welcome to the Stock Exchange News. This is about two things and two things only. Buying and selling. Great. Out of the frying pan and into the fire. Hello, Professor. Attack of the pterosaurs! No, oh, it's just you. Hello, Edna. Do you know how I can get out of here? <laughs> of course I do. I always use the laundry lift to travel to my Peruvian amber mines. The laundry lift goes all the way to Peru? Of course not, silly. You have to transfer at the continental shelf in the Sonoran Desert. Do you know anything about Dr. Marcel? More than most. Did you know that he has a dark secret? I knew it! I knew it! Yes. He's breeding dino-human hybrids in his secret facility on Jupiter. No, I didn't know that. Can I borrow your ticket for the laundry lift? Don't be preposterous. I can't do that. I've got to get to my Peruvian amber mines to recover dino DNA. That's too bad. How's research coming along? Uh, quite satisfactorily. The only things missing are a couple of dino genes for my secret breeding program, if you get my drift. That sounds exciting. How does one breed dinos? Oh, do come on. Everybody knows that. Oh, dinosaurs hatch from occlusions in amber. I'll drop by again later. If the world still exists, then, is what you mean to say. Yeah, give or take ten minutes. Hello? Hello! Bye! W what's that? Bye? Bye! Bye? Bye! Bye? Would you recommend selling eventually? Yes! Sell now! Quickly! Stop buying! Stop buying! What's that? 
Phew. <laughs> that was close. This was the optimal moment, you say? <sighs> Luckily, I wasn't distracted. Unimaginable. Hello? Hello! Cell! What's that? Cell! Cell! Cell? Cell! Cell? Are you sure? Yes! Cell now! Quickly! Stop buying! Stop buying! What's that? Phew! <laughs> that was close. Hello? Hello! Bye! W what's that? Bye? Bye! Bye? Bye! Bye? What did you recommend selling eventually? Look, Brucie, it's a boy! What? What? Just a joke. A joke? Oh no. Not again. The phone call! Hello? <sighs> you still there? What's that? What? Lost everything? Not again! <sighs> okay. I understand. Alright. Later. <sighs> Didn't you want to make a phone call? Here. You can keep the phone. to be a telecommunications engineer in order to fix that. Empty. What was that? Change! Be man Hello, stranger woman. You can call me Edna. Pleased to meet you, Edna. Who's your little friend? That's Harvey. He's helping me to escape. Hi, Harvey. Cool, get up, buddy. Do you know a way out of here? A speedy mental recovery comes to mind. That, of course, almost never happens. Maybe that's because the criteria of mental health are subject to Dr. Marcel's judgment. And, to be honest, who would admit to his own customers that their demand has been fulfilled? That's quite cynical for someone in a bee suit. Anyway, some of us loonies use the old laundry lift system. The unauthorized changing of floors is possible that way. The laundry lift to freedom is yet to be built. Why are you locked up here? You seem to be wise and balanced. I have a theory. I think it has something to do with my clothes. Men in bee suits have a bad reputation. Where do you think the bad reputation of the bee look stems from? There's no question about that. The media. Men in bee suits are generally represented as the laughing stock. And the main culprit? Children's animated films. Animation movie authors are basically mounting a campaign against us. The Mexican in The Simpsons. Charlie Brown in Peanuts or Bumblebee from Transformers. Men in bee suits are the clowns of the media. Why are you wearing a bee suit? To show solidarity with other men in bee suits. To open the world market for the insectoid garment as conceptual performance satire. To boycott the fashion industry. And finally, to express my admiration for those hard-working honey collectors. Admit it. You lost a wager. I lost a wager. Why do you have such big ears? All the better to eat you with. And as a valve for my exceptionally high output of earwax, I'm afraid. Exceptionally high output of earwax? Yuck! Yes, 
It is no picnic. I don't think it should be used in the same context as picnic at all. This overproduction is some kind of an allergic reaction with me. I'm allergic to hot beverages. Ah, I could still use a good cup of coffee right now. Are you trying anything in particular? I'm still waiting for inspiration. A sip of coffee would surely be of help, but I'm ashamed because of my allergy. That's nothing to be ashamed of. My allergy leads to an overproduction of earwax. Oh. I'll be going then. Go ahead. Barkeep, one drink, please. I'll be with you in a minute. I'm still serving this gentleman here. But he already has a drink. Don't tell me my job. Hey, you. I'm Edna. Who are you? Hi, Edna. I'm Peter. Really? What parents call their child Peter? How old are you anyway? Nobody's named Peter nowadays. My, 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 my. What an exceptionally ugly name. I'd kill myself if I had a name like that. Uh, I mean, it isn't that bad. The name might be ugly, but it becomes you in a way. Is there something wrong with you? Something wrong doesn't even begin to describe it. It's my 40th birthday today. Yet one more year, one more decade on the odometer. <sighs> My life really can't get much worse. You have a bipolar disorder, right? The doc calls it that. Yeah. And what do you call it? I call it... Peter. I could try to cheer you up a little. You might as well try. I don't see how that could make things worse. At least you're still alive. That doesn't go without saying at your age, you know? You're entering a phase in your life where the only way is down. The good times won't return. And you might as well forget about all the achievements you haven't made by now. You've missed that boat, Peter. From this point on, it's going to get permanently worse. Uh... I've lost the thread just now. What was I driving at? You wanted to cheer me up. Oh, yeah. Right. I give up. You're simply too hard a nut to crack. Thanks for your help. Don't mention it. Do you know a way out of here by any chance? There is no way out. Not out of this building. Not out of this skin of mine. Not out of this life. I'd better leave you alone in your despair. Right. Why should anyone want to keep me company? You're right. I don't know either. Here, I've brought you a cup of coffee. How considerate of you. Give me a pee! Or 
<laughs> you know what? You can keep the pee. What are you doing here? What does it look like? I'm throwing a surprise party! Where are the other guests? Hello! It's a surprise party! What kind of surprise would it be if everyone knew about it? You didn't have to do that. The party is not for you. Today is the birthday of Peter. Oh, but please don't tell him the party is here. It's supposed to be a surprise. We'll see about that. You have to promise you won't tell him. Okay. Promise? All right, I promise. Swear it. I swear. Cross your heart. Okay, okay, okay. Cross your heart and hope to die. I swear it, okay? Okay, I'll take your word for it. Interesting choice of venue. What do you mean? Don't you think more people would come if it wasn't in the bathroom of all places? I don't know. It is a surprise party after all. And what could possibly be more surprising? Surprising doesn't do it justice. Appalling or absurd. That's more like it. Oh, yeah? So, where would you have thrown the party? How about the bar? That's out of the question. Peter's been sitting there all day long crying into his drink and it's supposed to be a surprise party he's a little touchy when it comes to his age i hope the party can cheer him up a little how about the break room huh no we never go in there anymore three people vanished there once they were actors i think they were auditioning for a play they were never seen again. How about the TV room? No! I loathe parties where everyone just hangs around in front of the tube. How about the recreation room? That was my first thought, too. But King Adrian was opposed. King Adrian? He rules the lounge. He is a wise and just king. And rumor has it that he's psychic. He rarely receives visitors, though, I'm afraid. His right-hand man, Drugglejug, is as tough as he is attractive. Any room would have been better. I like it here. Do you know a way out of here? Why would I want to get out of here? There's always something going on in here. The people are nice. Plus, you don't have to feel embarrassed about anything in here. If you forget to put your pants on, nobody will notice. If you want to get out of here, you'd better talk to Emilio. If you can find him, I believe he's currently working on a tunnel. If you get really desperate, you could talk to the key master. But I'd only do that as a last resort if I were you. That guy is dangerous. His solitary confinement cell is on the second floor, though. So you'll have to wait until after lunch. We're being escorted to the dorm then, you know. Key master, huh? Keep on celebrating. Oh, I will. Oh, yeah. Turn the lights off on your way out. We'll see. Could you please turn off the lights before you go? Do it yourself. I've got something for you. This will get you back on your feet in no time. I doubt that. There's only one choice available. 
stinky drink. Man, this barkeeper has the worst chicken scratch since Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee had the tiger claw, Edna. No wonder you couldn't read it. Barkeep, one drink, please. Of course, my dear. What will it be? A stinky drink, please. One stinky drink coming up. That's cute. With a little umbrella. But what's that funky smell? Did somebody die suddenly? I must be crazy. Are you all right? Edna, say something. The natives have surrounded the fort, Colonel. Phew, thank God. Everything back to normal. How is the drink? So-so. Well, at least you finished it. Yes, I had to destroy it. Something as diabolical as this stinky drink should not roam free in the world. Besides, I didn't finish it completely. I left the fly. I could press the fly into the earwax. That sounds good to my ears. So why don't we just do it? <laughs> it resembles a mosquito that's been enclosed in tree resin. I've got something for you. Oh, I can't believe it. Dino DNA embedded in amber like it should be. This is exactly what I need for my dino breeding program. <sighs> May I keep it? What will you give me in return? Hmm. Well, the only thing I can give you is my ticket for the laundry lift. After all, I no longer need to travel to my Peruvian amber mines. Do we have a deal? Done deal. This is supposed to be a ticket? That's just a coat hanger. Excuse me, please. Yes, my child. Do you really need this coat hanger for your weather experiment? I've got one here that's at least as good. Aha. Uh -huh. And now you'd like to swap. That would be nifty. Well, if it makes you happy. Thank you. You're a real friend. I've got my ticket. And may I see it? Very well. You may pass. Hello over there. Oh, a new neighbor. Who are you? I am Mr. Frock, of course. <laughs> Strange name, that. It is meant for a human, but I am a... A frock. I get it. Oh, no, not at all, you flatterer. I am merely a coat. Don't tell me you live here. Why not? This lift offers a lot of convenience for a piece of apparel like me. And what convenience exactly would that be? Well, there's this rail where you can put coat hangers. And it's dry. 
We clothes are very absorbent, you know. I see. Where's this lift going? I can't answer that, I'm afraid. There are three exits in total. One of them is the laundry in the basement. You get a great view from there. Unfortunately, I forget where the other two exits lead. Why? How long have you been hanging up here? <laughs> they used to call me Mr. Toga. Wow, you are exceptionally white. What do you use? Astonishing, isn't it? I'm very proud of my colorlessness. I used to be beige, but there's not a lot of light in here, so the pigments left out of boredom. Are there any moths in here? Don't frighten me. What makes you think that? Have you seen anything? I had a feeling just now of something moving in the shadows. Oh, that. Those are just wolf spiders. There are lots of them in here, but moths. Now, that would be a disaster. My fabric is so delicate. Isn't the next exit due soon? I have the same feeling. that time has slowed down while we were talking. Oh, here it is. Power usage seems to be within acceptable range. Hmm. They're using too much energy. It's like someone's leaving the light on all the time. I never wanted to be a firefighter. I was more partial to the opposing side. What do you think, Harvey? Shall I press it? I'd like to see that. I'm gonna do it. Go ahead. Be my guest. I'll do it. I'll really do it. You don't have the guts. I'm serious. Chicken! Chicken! Edna! What now? It doesn't seem to have had any effect. This is not a remote control. Hello, princess. What's a girl like you? doing in an asylum like this? Wait, don't tell me. You're Edna, right? Hey, how do you know that? There isn't much that Dr. Marcel can hide from me. That he's keeping you locked up in the tower, for example. So we seem to be fellow prisoners. By the way, people call me the Keymaster. Isn't that the cutest nickname? What else do you know about me? Just that a dark secret links you to the doctor. An unspeakable, dark secret. He spends much time and energy trying to erase your memory. One could even say it is a personal crusade. And the fact that you always find a way to remember drives him to great irritation. Do you know how I can get out of here? Yes. What? Yes. I know how you can get out of here. I've had plenty of time to figure out an escape plan. Only problem is, I can't do anything about it in here. You, on the other hand, can move relatively unrestricted out there. And you are clever. Unlike most other inmates. So, what's your plan? First, you must find a way to the other side of the bars. Then, you'll have to make a copy of the master key. We'll be able to get out of the building with that. It opens my cell door, too. Finally, we need a vehicle to exit the compound. Sounds fairly simple, but... How do I get to the other side of the grate? You'll find a way. 
I'm sure. Maybe through the laundry lift system. There is a third exit in the basement. But please, don't take any unnecessary risks. If you drop down there without soft padding, you'll break every bone in your body. And that's it for my plan. How very considerate. Thank you. How do I get a copy of the Master Key? You'll have to find the original first. Then, you'll need clay for the imprint, a furnace to bake the clay, and an easily melted metal to cast the copy. Gold would be perfect. Where do I get gold? Hmm. <sighs> Tricky, that. Dr. Marcel keeps his polo trophies too securely to get at them. The only alternative I see is Adrian's medal from the Jigsaw Contest. However, Adrian is sitting in his cushion fort in the lounge, like Lord Muck. And he guards himself with this uh, playboy. What's his name? Drugglechuck. <sighs> okay, okay. It's all right. As stupid as Adrian might be, he has a pretty impressive mind-reading act. It might prove difficult to get the medal from him. Even if you manage to get past Drugglejug. Where can I find clay? Good question. The clay from occupational therapy has been completely pounded into ugly ashtrays. You can't use that anymore. But maybe it would help you to know that this asylum has been built on a pretty clay-packed layer of earth. How do I get a vehicle? Everything in its time. But we're not there by a long shot yet. I think I know what I have to do now. Good luck, Edna. Is there anything else you'd like to know? Why are you in solitary? They think I'm dangerous. And they're probably right. That's all you need to know. Is there anything else you know about Dr. Marcel? He is a sick man, guided by hate. Ever since the death of his son, he's been bitter and eccentric, locks himself up in his secret room, and performs these sadistic electric shock treatments on his patients. A dark secret links you to the doctor. He's obsessed with the idea of erasing your memory. Is that enough information? I can do without your help. No, you can't. I've got to go. Give my regards to Lady Liberty. Hello, Princess. Is there anything else you know about Dr. Marcel? He is a sick man, guided by hate. Ever since the death of his son, he's been bitter and eccentric. Locks himself up in his secret room and performs these sadistic electric shock treatments on his patients. A dark secret links you to the doctor. He's obsessed with the idea of erasing your memory. Is that enough information? I've got to go. Give my regards to Lady Liberty. Hello. Hello and hello. Who are you? I'm Marty. And this is my twin brother, Hadi. We are Siamese twins. But I bet you already suspected as much. Hadi and Marty? Those are highly unusual names. Well, that's because our dad is Japanese. And our mom is of Hopi origin. But you must have suspected as much. You can tell from Hadi's almond eyes. Why are you just sitting around here? We're making sure no one steals our bed. But all the beds are the same. Ha! That's what you think. If you know what to look for, there are huge differences. It's like with Hadi and me, there are few people who can distinguish between us. But after a while, you start to recognize the differences. That is our secret twin power, so to speak. We see the differences where others just shrug their shoulders helplessly. Which brings us back to the subject of beds. On first appearance, they all look the same. But this one here... Is the only one with a bed sheet. Why is 
the both of you only wearing one sweater? That's a silly question. It's much too warm for wearing two. You're not Siamese twins at all. Correct. We are actually Siamese triplets. But Brody is away in Paris studying art history. Yes, he's always been the strange one. I'm taking off. Will you come along? Um, no. We have the softest blanket in the whole world right here. And where, pray tell, would we go anyway? See you later. Rock on. And send my regards to Lady Liberty if you see her. Stop fidgeting for a moment. I have an idea. You're free! Wow! What's going on? What have you done? Are you a surgeon or something? What's wrong? You're free! Each of you guys can do whatever you always wanted to do. Oh, the wealth of possibilities. And the accompanying pressure that comes with it. Ooh, my. What's wrong? You're free! Each of you guys can do whatever you always wanted to do. Oh, the wealth of possibilities. And the accompanying pressure that comes with it. Ooh, my. Here we go! Hello over there! Oh! A new neighbor! Isn't the next exit due soon? I have the same feeling that time has slowed down while we were talking. Oh, here it is! Hello over there! Oh! A new neighbor! Isn't the next exit due soon? I have the same feeling that time has slowed down while we were talking. Oh, here it is! Hello over there! Oh! A new neighbor! Isn't the next exit due soon? I have the same feeling that time has slowed down down while we were talking. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Though I can think of a thousand ways to use it, I still think it's too bulky to lug around. You're not supposed to eat chips in bed. Ah. 
Here we go! Hello over there! Oh! A new neighbor! Isn't the next exit due soon? I have the same feeling that time has slowed down while we were talking. Oh, here it is! A true inferno. Hello? Anybody home? Whoops! See? ¿Qué tal? And who might you be? My name is Almilio Sánchez de Mobile Group, but most people call me Almighty Ruler. Can I call you Almo for short? If that's what you like, and you are? Call me Edna. Is that a nickname too? It stands for especially dumb nut Almilio. I don't get it. What's your business down there? What does it look like? I'm digging a tunnel to freedom! Unfortunately, I've struck a layer of hard clay. I won't be able to go on without the proper tool. And I ran out of spoons. You don't happen to have a spoon, do you? Don't you think there's a more convenient way out of here? Forget it! The front door is always guarded and the back door is permanently locked. The only key to that is carried by a guard named Blather, and he's more stubborn than a mule. But even if you could wrangle the key out of him, which is a big if, you'd still have to get over the wall or the main gate. Believe me, a tunnel is the fastest way. Good luck. I'll look for another way. You won't find one. Today is free choice day. Obviously, the chosen meals are arranged according to the seats. The order hasn't been made yet. Oh, great balls of fire! There's cutlery in there! Let's see. Now, what if we hear? A knife and a fork! This series of surprises just keeps on coming. What's this? Not one spoon? Where the heck are the spoons? I'll take it. A bit bulky, don't you think?
I'd have to get it open first. Closed. That makes me angry. Yeah, I can reach between the desk and the drawer with this. With any luck... There! Success! There's an old key in the drawer. I'll take that. I bet it's important. Dr. Marcel kept it hidden in a locked drawer after all. It doesn't fit here. Let's see. Wow! That really worked! I vaguely remember Alfred. He was an extremely obnoxious boob, I'll admit that. But to think that he's dead now... Oh. Oh. Edna? Edna? Mm? The kid was a klutz. I know. Mm. He was a jerk. I... I know. I couldn't stand him. An idiot! A moron! A pimpled ulcer. A bag of pus? Dumb as a bag of nails. Cry, baby. Butthead. Goof. Brain dead mother friggin' vomit munching horse fornicator. Edna? <laughs> I miss him. I know. Dr. Marcel will pay for this. You think he's got something to do with this? Look around you. It's obvious that this guy is insane. I know the recollection of what happened back then must be buried somewhere in my brain. This is exactly why Dr. Marcel is trying to erase my memory. And to think he's got the nerve to accuse my father. We'll find the missing piece of the puzzle, Edna. I promise. Oh, Alfred. Whatever happened? Ha <laughs> Edna! 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 What? You little swamp-dwelling toad! I'll kill you! Oh... I mean, I would if you weren't already dead. That's Alfred's homework. Alfred was a real nerd, and he never let me copy off him. What's this? Scribbled on the edge of the page. Mattis Conrad? That's my father's name! But it isn't his handwriting. Although somebody has made a great effort to copy it, obviously. Just a second. That's my handwriting. I don't get it. Why did I sign my father's name on the edge of Alfred's homework? Harvey, do you know anything about it? Oh yeah, I can remember that day very well. That was the day I taught you how to forge signatures. Can you remember this, Harvey? Yes, indeed I do! You and Alfred had a private lesson with Mr. Hornbush. The lesson was utterly boring. And while Alfred did his best to follow, I taught you how to forge signatures. Do you think we can go back there so I can learn it again? That should be no problem. Are you ready? Yeah. Temple morph me to the past. As you wish. Hold on! Oh dear. I really do remember, I'm afraid. This is Mr. Hornbush's math class. He was very strict and he always picked on me. I'm afraid that if I don't pay attention, he'll lock me in the cupboard again. This is a riddle you have to solve on your own. Good luck, Harvey. 
I wonder if it can be of any use. What does that piece of paper say? Oh, it's a note from my father. He just forgot to put marmalade on my sandwich again. There's a letter in Mr. Hornbush's coat pocket. I'd love to know what it says. It's really handy that the cupboard has a peephole in exactly the right position. Edna needs to know about this merry-go-round. If Edna gets wind of a circus, she'll be even more upset about not being allowed out! I think an ice cream is exactly what Edna needs right now. Edna's not gonna believe this, a Ferris wheel! Edna should be enjoying the nice weather. It's not really fair that she has to sweat over books in here instead. Edna, Edna, Edna! There's a merry-go-round outside! I love merry-go-rounds. This lesson is beginning to be a real torture. Mr. Hardbush! Mr. Hardbush! Edna is talking to herself again, and I can't properly concentrate on my assignment! Edna Conrad, you keep interrupting the lesson. I'll give you an official warning. On the third warning, I'm putting you in the cupboard. You understand? I'm sorry, Mr. Hornbush. It'll never happen again. Edna should be enjoying the nice weather. It's not really fair that she has to sweat over books in here instead. Edna! 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 It's the warmest day of the year today! Oh no. And I have to sit here pushing numbers around. Mr. Hardbush! Mr. Hardbush! Edna is talking to herself again, and I can't properly concentrate on my assignment! I have to ask you to behave, young lady. That is the second warning, Edna. Interrupt the lesson one more time, and I'll put you in the cupboard. I'm sorry, Mr. Hornbush. It'll never happen again. I saw it! That's not fair! Not fair, not fair, not fair! Mr. Hardbush! Mr. Hardbush! Edna is talking to herself again, and I can't properly concentrate on my assignment! Edna! That's it! Enough is enough! Into the cupboard! Come on, move it! But... No back talk now! Can you reach the letter? Sure. Hmm. I can't make out anything. It's much too dark in here. This hole in the cupboard could prove very useful. You could pass the letter through the hole. Then I can read it for you. Good idea. This is incredible! The letter is from Dr. Marcel, addressed to Mr. Hornbush. The doctor is paying him money to hold you back in school. And he stresses that under no circumstances are you to be allowed to leave class early. Especially, and this one's underlined, when the weather is good. I can hardly believe it! Obviously, Dr. Marcel has been carrying out a personal vendetta against me for a long time. He'll pay for this. This all seems a bit illogical to me, but I've seen it written in black and white. We'll get to the bottom of this eventually.
I think Edna is afraid of Mr. Hornbush. Maybe you should ask Mr. Hornbush to let you take part in the lesson again. I can't believe that you, of all people, would say that, Harvey. Why? We can wreak more havoc that way! That, of course, is true. Mr. Hornbush! Isn't that your father's handwriting on the note? Yes, why? It's just a little memo about my sandwich. Well, how about we create our own little note for Mr. Hornbush? In your father's name! You mean, we'll forge his handwriting? We'll just borrow it! After all, you have plenty of time in here to practice it. Or did you have other plans? Hmm, you're right. This really sounds like a good idea. Maybe I'll even manage to get out soon enough to enjoy the weather. That's how you learned to forge signatures back then. You got so good at it that after a while you could forge anyone's signature. Just by looking at it. Yeah, I think I could still do that. I really hope this is going to help me. This classroom is not exactly what I call one of my favorite memories. I'm sorry, but I forgot my stilts in my other gown. This looks dangerous. Ah, what the hey? Hello over there. Oh, a new neighbor. Isn't the next exit due soon? I have the same feeling that time has slowed down while we were talking. Oh, here it is. Hey, don't touch that. That's the only spoon I could find in the whole house. Yes, I think I can learn the barkeeper's handwriting. He's a bit dyslexic, it seems. He even writes stinky drink with three X's. shall I write? X, X, X. Okay. Barkeep, one drink, please. Of course, my dear. What will it be? One X, 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 please. It's not on the menu. Of course it is. Bright and clear. What? Let me see. You're right. What came over me? I don't even have the ingredients for that. 
Where the hell am I supposed to muster up minced meat? If you'll excuse me, I have to go to the basement and fetch my rifle. there. Oh, a new neighbor. Isn't the next exit due soon? I have the same feeling that time has slowed down while we were talking. Oh, here it is. Here we go. Hello over there. Oh, a new neighbor. Isn't the next exit due soon? I have the same feeling that Time has slowed down while we were talking. Oh, here it is. What's up? I finally found a spoon for you. That's supposed to be a spoon? It has to be. The barkeeper stirred his drinks with it. Hmm. Well, what the hey? This will have to do until you found the proper one. Hmm. Thanks for your effort. I hate to interrupt, but... Make it snappy. What's that you're watching? I'm watching the loonies. Usually, I prefer TV, but there's something wrong with the aerial again. Shame on those unreliable aerials. It's not that bad. The morons can be quite amusing. The only problem is that you start getting a little loco yourself. If you keep staring at these monitors for too long, You'll see them start to form letters. Did you drink all that water? Don't remind me. I'm bursting. But I'm not supposed to leave my post. As if anything ever happens with the loonies. But I'm pretty strict in this respect. There's a reason why they call me bladder. Why don't you just go? I'll keep watching in the meantime. Hey! I have responsibilities here. It's not just about sitting around, killing time. I wouldn't dare think of it that way. Wow! All of the water? Don't remind me, please. It's unhealthy to hold it in for so long. I'll manage. There's a reason why they call me bladder. The volume of your bladder must be enormous. Well... I fell into a cauldron as a child. You mean the magic cauldron? No, just a regular cauldron. I give up. I'm no match for your bladder. Anything else? 
I'll leave you alone. Yeah, please do. Some are lit and some are dark. It all depends on the lighting in the rooms they monitor. Somewhat hypnotic. This looks dangerous. Hey, what the hey? Hello over there. Oh, a new neighbor. Isn't the next exit due soon? I have the same feeling that time has slowed down while we were talking. Oh, here it is. It's attached to the wall. At the same time, not far away. Oh yeah, lights on, lights off. What the heck? The monitors, they're showing a pattern. It's a message. there. Oh, a new neighbor. Isn't the next exit due soon? I have the same feeling that time has slowed down while we were talking. Oh, here it is. Here we go. Hello over there. Oh, a new neighbor. Isn't the next exit due soon? I have the same feeling that Time has slowed down while we were talking. Oh, here it is. Hey, stop it! Darn it! The key is attached to his belt. I'll have to come up with something else. Cool. I've got mud now. I think I could make an imprint this way. Wow, that really worked. I'm Sherlock Holmes. You're Watson, I'm Holmes. I'm Holmes, you're Watson. 
No way! I'm totally Holmes! What's going on out there? I'm Holmes, and you are Inspector Clouseau. Deal! Chocolate flakes. Ingredients? Industrial foam and sugar. It says there's a surprise in the box. Hey, there was a surprise in there. It's a brand spanking new authentic police badge with small parts that could be swallowed. Cool. I bet only the toughest cops get the small parts that could be swallowed. Okay. This should work. This looks dangerous. Hey, what the hey? Hello over there. Ooh, a new neighbor. Isn't the next exit due soon? I have the same feeling that time has slowed down while we were talking. Oh, here it is. Druggle Jug. Is that your name? Druggle Jug. Am I not allowed in there? Druggle Jug. But I need to be granted an audience with the king. Druggle Jug. Too bad. <sighs> what a guy. If only I could impress him somehow. Hold it. Power on the logical branch of the FBI Special Squad. Sergeant Edna. Druggle Jug? Of course I can show you identification. Druggle Jug. You bet. Can I have access to the king now? Druggle Jug. Cool. I mean, thank you. Well, well, well. My scouts reported that you'd be coming. A new power, they said is on the rise in the eastern realm of the recreation room to overthrow me and my kingdom. What are you talking about? So, you managed to overcome my god. Poor, devoted Drugglejug. I will avenge him with your blood. What? But woe is me. My hand is weak, for the weight of a sword is far too much for me to bear. Have I been temple morphed into the wrong game? 
Before you usurp what my dynasty has achieved through the years, my castle, my throne, and my gold medal from the Jigsaw Puzzle Contest, you will have to defeat me in a mental duel. Are you prepared for the challenge? I am ready. So be it. Let the joust begin. There's no turning back now. It's all or nothing. Victory or defeat. Glory or shame. Fish or cut bait. You know how to create suspense. I will ask you a question. And you shall give me the answer, or perish! All right, all right. Just ask the question. Well then, the question is... Heads or tails? That's all? Heads or tails? That's the duel for the royal throne? Heads or tails? Tails. Heads. Well, maybe you'll have better luck next time. Have you had enough? I want to try once more. So be it. Heads or tails? Tails. Heads. Well, maybe you'll have better luck next time. Have you had enough? Why must I always lose? Do not blame yourself. There was a time when I too had to endure the same misfortunes as you. I tell nary a lie. I was a regular misadventurer. But then I went out for a walk one night on the roof of the tower. There was a thunderstorm brewing. I opened my umbrella as a precaution, and my feet were immersed in buckets of water when I noticed that the TV antenna was crooked. Immediately, I took it upon myself to rectify the problem. What I remember next is seeing a dazzling flash of light. What exactly it was? I cannot fathom, but after that incident, I've never been off the mark again. Well, I'll be gone then. Cheerio! Hey, Alu! Hello, Edna. What brings you here this time? I have one more question about King Adrian. Fire away. Can you help me beat him? Who do you think I am? Mr. Miyagi? Oh, please. With sugar and cream and a cherry on top? Well, all right then. I have a radical idea how to level the playing field. But you won't like it. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Electroshock therapy. What? We'll give you electroshocks so that you can predict things as well. I'm not sure. We can meet at the electroshock therapy chair, and off we'll go. I'd need a better coat hanger, though. The inspector won't let me ride the laundry lift with this one anymore. What do you think? I'm really not sure if I'd like that. Take your time and think about it. When you're ready, just bring me a better coat hanger. Let's talk about something else. I have to get a move on. Take care of your karma.
next exit is approaching. Here we go! That's strange. Where's Mr. Frock? The next exit is approaching. This looks dangerous. Hey, what the hey? The next exit is approaching. Let's go! I want shock treatment. Very well then. We'll meet by the shock therapy chair. Can you find the way? I hope so. So, off we go. The next exit is approaching. Here we go! The next exit is approaching. Ah, Edna. Finally. So, are we ready to go? Sometime later. I hope you're all right over there. Uh. This is your last chance to change your mind. I... Too late. Wow, that was really something. This looks dangerous. Hey, what the hey? The next exit is approaching. Well, well, you have returned to challenge me yet again, as I foretold.
Are you prepared to suffer another defeat? I want to try once more. So be it. Heads or tails. Heads. Oh my goodness! It is indeed heads. Have you by any chance joined the psychic's world as well? Well, we'll never need to find out. If you just give me the medal now... Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Not so fast! You have been right one time. I shall give you that. But the rules say... Ha 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 ha! That I'm entitled to a chance to try and win the medal back. What? But... I choose... Tails. Wait a minute, that's... And tails it is. That means I get to keep the medal. You are out of luck. Is it possible that all the electric shocks were to no avail? What did you say? Oh, nothing. Another try? Well, I'll be gone then. Cheerio! The next exit is approaching. Here we go! The next exit is approaching. One can register for therapy with this blank form, but the signature of the psychologist responsible is missing. I'm trying to escape, not move house. Let's see. Just another load of files. Hey, this looks useful. There's a list of the current inmates. It shows where I can find the corresponding patient histories. I seem to know some of the names. Well, normally I don't care much about files, but snooping around in other people's patient histories is so delightfully prohibited. So, whose patient history shall I look at? Is this supposed to be a patient's history? I quote, name? B-Man, first pet, black pony, characteristic, was always chosen first during physical education lessons. That's all. Is this supposed to be a patient's history? I quote. Name, Adrian, king of the recreation room. First pet, red cat. Characteristic, was always chosen second during physical education lessons. That's all. Is this supposed to be a patient's history? I quote, name, Droggle Jug. First pet, green dog. Characteristic, was always chosen third during physical education lessons. That's all. Is this supposed to be a patient's history? I quote, name, Peter. First pet, blue goldfish. Characteristic, was always chosen next to last during physical education lessons. That's all.
Is this supposed to be a patient's history? I quote, name, hottie, first pet, yellow rat, characteristic, was always chosen last during physical education lessons. That's all. Okay, I think I could learn to forge this signature. Some time later. That should do it. I can make an exact copy of the signature now. Very good idea. I'll just sign the form with Dr. Marcel's name. Group therapy for game designers. This is for the really messed up cases. Very interesting, Mr. Pokey. And this object interaction you were talking about, is this happening in this room right now? Are you even listening? All of us in here are nothing more than... Hold on a second. Yes, what can I do for you? Why don't you come a little closer? This is the group therapy session for video game designers. If you don't have a signed registration, you can't attend. I have a signed registration. Very well then. Please have a seat with the others. Okay, if everybody's ready, would you, as a new member of our group, like to begin, please? Yes, I'm ready. Would you be so kind as to introduce yourself to the group? If that's necessary. Hello, group. I am Adrian, king of the recreation room. I see. Would you please tell us something about your formative years? I was always picked second during gym class. Second. I, I see. Let's move on to the next question. What color would your pet have been if it had been a dog? Green. Green. Well, well. The case is clear. You've been struck by lightning. Your inability to resist atmospheric energies has frustrated you. That's why you developed a control psychosis. You have to be on top of everything all the time and everywhere. This desire is so deeply seated that your subconscious has developed precognitive abilities. Why don't you just let go? Not everything has to be subject to your control. Lightning is one of these things. You don't have to feel insecure or helpless because of this. That's it. You're cured. You may go now. Wow. I'm stunned. Harvey, are you still there? Don't worry, Edna. I'll always be with you.
This looks dangerous. Hey, what the hey? The next exit is approaching. Well, well, you have returned to challenge me yet again. As I foretold, are you prepared to suffer another defeat? Which place were you picked for a team during physical education class? First, of course. What other place is there for one such as I? Ha! And what kind of pet did you have as a child? A large, snappish dog. Just a second. It doesn't work like that. What color was it? What is this supposed to be? Some kind of therapy? Well... So tell me, which color was he? Red. Wow! You're right! Suddenly, I feel so... so understood. And everything is so much clearer. Yes! I was hit! by the same flash of lightning twice in a row, and feeling utterly helpless. I developed a control psychosis. I should start to relax and take it easy. Not everything has to be subject to my control. Um, exactly. Hey, thanks. You've helped me a great deal. I want to try once more. So be it. Heads or tails. Heads. Indeed. Heads. My turn. I choose tails. What's that? That cannot be. It's... it's heads. What does that mean? Well, foremost this seems to mean... Edna is the king. Edna is the king. King, 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 king. Give me the medal, you mental. Your throne is mine now. Wow. The medal really is made out of genuine gold. The next exit is approaching. Here we go! The next exit is approaching. Okay. This should work. Okay. Okay. Cool. The water has cooled off the molten gold. Yippee!
me! I've made it! My own master key! Yeah! I'm free at last! Yippee! Let's go to the zoo then! We can't do that, Harv. I have to find some evidence that exonerates my dad. In that case, I hope the information can be found inside those high walls. What? Darn it! Meanwhile... What's going on here? Why aren't the patients having lunch? Doctor, we have a problem. Holger and Babbitt are missing. I've just solved one of the problems. Doctor, it's a catastrophe! Edna's escaped from her cell! Babbitt, how often have patients escaped from their cells? You mean, on a daily basis? Three. On average. And how many of them have escaped over the wall? Well... none. None. That's right. The only way in or out is the main gate. And even if she finds a way to open the gate, she'll never get half a mile without a vehicle. She must still be somewhere on the premises. Search every floor, one after the other. And would you please escort the patients to lunch? These are the sorts of things you learn watching TV or playing adventure games. And now? I don't know how to drive. I should get some help. Who was that? Laundry lift has been turned off. Darn it! Yeah! Yeah! Hello, Princess. Any progress? You bet. I've got the master key. All right then. Let me out. We can proceed to phase two of my plan now. Uh-oh. There's Dr. Marcel's driver. Only one time Uh, oh? Is anybody there? I better find another way. Ah. 
Yippee! It still works. Blah! Old and inedible. What's that? An alarm? Uh-oh, there's Dr. Marcel's driver. Only one time One time Why you one time Uh oh? Is anybody there? I better find another way. You are free! Ah, that's why the door is open. Don't get your hopes up too high. The biggest obstacle is still waiting for us. What are you waiting for? Let's go! We need a vehicle. I'll wait here until you've dug one up. Preferably one that isn't already occupied. Yes, sure. Just pass the hard labor off to the rank and file. I found a van! Have you now? Good. So the hopes I put in you weren't... all for naught. It's in the motor pool garage. You go right ahead. We'll meet there. Oh, you're already here. Yes, I am. This is a pretty nice ride you found here. Except, not only is a rear wheel missing, the motor won't start. I think it's the wiring. But I'm not an expert. So what are we going to do? Good question. I'm back again. Can we take off now? Not yet. We'll have to get the motor running first. We'll need an expert for that. Somebody who knows his way around electricity. And we're still short a back tire. You'll have to find a replacement. And some kind of car jack. 
After all that has been dealt with, then we can tackle the issue of the main gate. I'll get working on that then. That's what I would have suggested. If I'm very careful, I might just be able to... without setting off the alarm. I'm back again. I'll get working on that then. That's what I would have suggested. I got us a spare tire. Very good. Igor, all we need now is some kind of a car jack. This might work. The chef's not looking right now. <laughs> hey! Psst! I've got the master key, and I'm planning to escape. Are you coming too? Mm, okay, but on two conditions. First, we're only coming if you have an escape plan ready. Secondly, you'll have to distract the guards somehow. Work on escape plan, distract guards. Got it. I have an escape plan. Our escape car is in the garage behind the house. The only thing we still need is your help changing a tire. Very good. All you have to do now is distract the guards. I'll go hide again. All right. See you later. This might work. The chef's not looking right now. <laughs> Food fight! <laughs> I hope Hadi and Madi got out of there in one piece. Are you ready? Sure. Did you get the spare tire? Hmm, it's not exactly the right make, but it should do as a makeshift solution. Who 
was that? Champ? Ah, hello, Edna. Still trying to break out? I have the master key. We can skedaddle now. Take it easy, child. Have you found out how to get through the main gate yet? We'll get a vehicle and outwit the watchman at the gate. That idea is so crazy. It simply has to work. Tell me when you found a suitable vehicle. We have an escape vehicle, but we'll need your help. Yes, yes. Aluman saves the day again. How can I be of help? The motor won't start. It's the ignition. And since you know your way around electricity, I thought... All right, all right. Where did you say the car was? It's in the open garage at the motor pool, next to the back door. Okie dokie. I'll have a look at it then. What's that? An alarm? Hey, hasn't Aluman arrived yet? He popped in briefly. He took a quick peek under the hood, then he cried for a short time, and off he went again. I believe he's sitting in the garden now, meditating. Nice to see you. I have a vision of you and me walking to the car. It is the future, you see. I've heard they serve free quiche in the garage. Nice try. But I feed exclusively on cosmic energy. And in order to get the motor running, I need a big serving of it. What's up? Why aren't you with the car? I was already there and took a quick look at the situation. The battery's dead. And there's nothing you can do? That's not what I said. I think I'll be able to recharge the battery. Great! What exactly is your plan? I'll charge it with positive energy. I see. Positive energy, is it? Well, yeah. <laughs> that... <sighs> you have to have faith, Edna. How can I accumulate the necessary positive energy without faith? Isn't there any other way? It's either positive energy or staying here. I'll be on my way. See you later.
This is the perfect place for my rake. Wow, it emanates an incredible calm now. Hey, Alu. Ah, Edna. How nice to see you. What do you think about the pattern that I've raked? What? That is... It's... This is exactly what I needed. It vibrates in unison with my chi. I feel the energy flowing into me. You go ahead to the car. I'll be waiting there. You mean you'll follow? No. I'm already there. You're also able to teleport? Yes. It's either that, or Pokey was too lazy to draw an animation. Can we get started now? I need a jumper cable. Do you have one? Would that be of any help? That is exactly what I need. The motor is running. It really is? What did you think? Of course it's running. Edna, now it's your turn again. You need to find a way to open the main gate. Cigarettes? Chewing gum? Gum would be nice. I'm on it. Who's there? You just wait. I'll get you. He. Hey, what's going on? I should do something that prevents the guard from closing the gate again. Hey! What have you done? Get out of here! Why is the gate open? The gate has to be closed at all times! What? The gate is still open? That little brat has tampered with the controls! What's that sound? A running motor! In the garage! Hey! What's going on? There's nobody here! What? Who? So, where are we destined for? Rio de Janeiro! I want to go to my father's house. There must be some clues there about what really happened back then. Something that can exonerate my dad and reveal Dr. Marcel's evil ploy. That's also a good idea. I'd have to know where exactly this house is and how one operates this thing. Where am I? What happened? 
There must have been an accident. Harvey? Harvey? Are you all right? I'm okay. You don't get hurt easily when your spine is made of terry cloth. But we seem to have lost a whole lot of things. Oh, hello. Have you sorted things out? I can't believe we had an accident. I guess these things just happen if you put a wacko in the driver's seat. Where are the others? Alaman clambered up the slope after he came to, was mumbling something about an epiphany. I'm afraid he might have lost the rest of his marbles now. He didn't have many left to begin with anyway. I didn't see the Keymaster anywhere. Did you, Marty? Nope. Does the car still work? All right. I take that question back. Don't you want to go on? Let's put it this way. It's not exactly at the top of our list. The guards from the asylum have put a roadblock further down the road. If you're smart, you'll stay here with us until they give up the search. It's much more cozy in here anyway. What are you up to? Muddy has invented a card trick. It's more like a system. Yeah, a system. He's hiding the Ace of Hearts using a system that only he knows. And Hadi has to figure it out. I'm almost there. I believe he would have gotten it a while ago, if it weren't for the electric shocks he keeps getting from the car. Every time he's about to pick the correct card. Every darn time. Strange coincidence, that. Would you like to have a try? Maybe later. I'll be going then. Don't let the door hit you on your way out. Empty, except for a tow rope. I'll take the tow rope. with a pointed hat. Forget it. Not even wild horses could drag me there, or any other animal for that matter. Hello, old dog. Did you overcome your little accident? Nicka woka bika baka dicka daka pang. Nice. What exactly are you doing? When we had this accident, and I was thrown through the air, that's when I had a vision. Shoes that grow with your feet. Nonsense. I know how I can be turned into a being of pure energy now. We all prayed for that. I need to be struck by lightning. It doesn't look like there's going to be a thunderstorm today. Don't bother me with trivialities. After I've been converted into a being of pure energy, I can make thunderstorms happen whenever I want. Have you seen the Keymaster? He's better off not showing his face around me. My Buddhist mindset prohibits me from all animus. But I think Hadi and Mati are pretty upset because of the accident. I thought they looked quite content sitting down there in the sedan. Surely they're contemplating ripping his tongue out and breaking his spine. Mati is playing cards. After that, they'll bend up his toenails. And Hadi is enjoying a smoke. And then they'll rip his skin from his bones with an old rusty nail. I'm glad I'm so mentally balanced. There's a roadblock in the way. Is it really the roadblock that's in the way? Couldn't it be your attitude instead? 
No, it's the roadblock. You can even see it from here, over there. That's it. Can I borrow your antioxidant? No. I need it to enhance my conductivity. After lightning has struck me, then you can have it. Great. In that case, I get it anyway. Do you think the shock therapy could be reversed? Interesting thought. You mean a correct prediction could charge you electrically? What? No, I didn't mean that. What I meant was... Generating electricity through precognition. That's in accordance with my theories. That implies that I would not only be omnipotent as an energy being, I'd also be omniscient. If only that lightning would strike me already. Good luck. I'll go now. Don't get yourself in trouble. I can't promise that. Oops, it's starting to roll away. Hey, what's going on? Stop! a bit cold to go swimming? No can do. The lock is rusted tight. sort of things out can I try again sure pick a card the third card positive right second round okay the first one are you sure Next try. The third card. Positive. The second from the left. Are you certain? Right. Second round. So, the last one. Totally convinced? The third card. Positive. Okay. The first one. Are you sure? Right. Third round. Okay. The first one. Are you sure? The second from the left. Are you certain? The third card. Positive. Right again. You've made it. Ouch! The auto body gave me an electric shock. That's crazy. The same thing happened to me when I won the last time. Is there anything else? 
Enough with this game. Gotta run. Don't let the door hit you on your way out. Wow. Somehow I feel better now. Elevated. Energetic. Rather charged. Winning a game always lifts your spirits. But maybe it's just the electrostatic charge from the auto body. Ouch! What was that? Lightning! You've been struck by lightning! Really? It didn't feel like anything I expected. It was so... unspectacular. Anyway, you're a creature of energy now. Yes, yes. That seems to be the case. So why don't you start acting like one? Wooga! Wooga? Wooga! Wooga! Now that you are a being of pure energy, I guess you won't be needing this anymore. Wooga! this stuff really is. Last resting place of... Mattis Conrad? This is my father's grave, Harvey. So it really is true. He is... dead after all. What can I do, Harvey? Where shall I go? Calm down, Edna. Let's just stick to our plan. We'll make our way home, then we'll look for compromising evidence against Dr. Marcel. We'll be okay, I'm sure of it. Hello? You have a visitor? Just a moment, please. I'm watching this. But I need refuge. Wait a second. You're Edna. Mattis Conrad's daughter. What? You knew my father? Did I know your father? The story of your father has become legend. Don't you remember what happened back then? No. In fact, I forgot everything. Tell me now. I want to hear the whole story. Yes, I think you should know. You probably know that your father was convicted for the murder of a child. He was given the death penalty. Yes, I've heard that. But I don't believe it. And he was not the perpetrator, indeed. I knew it. Actually, the whole thing happened like this. What's that? Is somebody playing the organ? That's not important now. Just tell me what happened. No, I have to check. I'll be back in a moment. Now you just wait here. And don't touch anything. All right. You have to promise. Yeah, yeah. I, I won't touch anything. I, I promise. Good girl. See you in a bit. I'll tell you everything when I get back. I'd better take it somewhere where there's a wall plug. There, now it's powered up, and the acoustics should be better as well. It's a powerful amp.
This is how you clean the organ pipes. <gasps> but... What? Ah, Edna. What happened here? What have you done? That's what you get when you free an insane man from an asylum. You should never have done this. But, but you said I should make a key for you. And why did you listen to me? I shouldn't be free, Edna. You should have known this. Everybody has a right to freedom. Have a close look at the poor reverend. Edna, that's what the freedom you gave me looks like. This is your creation. But... I have taken precautions, so this will never happen again. I've locked us both up in here. I can't be allowed out in the world ever again. I can't stay here. I've got to get to my father's house. You have no choice. This is a puzzle that even you won't be able to solve. How do you manage to escape without setting me free at the same time? I can see the asylum in the distance, and there's the roadblock, and there, isn't that Alu man on the observation deck? Now I can't see him anymore. Ah, I think Alu man has recovered from the bolt of lightning. Oh, I spoke too soon. any noise up there I'll come and get you Sounds like someone playing the guitar. Is that you, Harvey? Hey! Don't make so much noise down there! If you don't stop doing that, you'll create feedback! He's right. The strings are vibrating in harmony with the organ. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Elevator music. Better press stop. I'll collect the plug and pop it into the tape deck.
This rocks! that scream Oh no I didn't mean to do that Or did I All this can't be true Wake me up Harvey Please Harvey Harvey Say something I'm sorry, Edna. I just had the feeling as if I... What? What's up? Do you remember something? Oh, nothing. We... we've got more important things to do right now. Take the key and let's get out of here as fast as we can, okay? You took the words right out of my mouth, Harvey. Home. Finally. What now? I can remember things, but just little details. I used to set ants on fire in that flower bed over there. In this pond, I used to blow up frogs. It all feels smaller than it used to. Let's try to get inside. Then we'll look for my room. I used to write a diary. Maybe it's still there. I'm sure I'll be able to remember everything with that. Hmm. I remember that one of these ugly gnomes had the key for the door. Maybe one of your buddies, huh? Hmm. I think my father kept the key in one of these gnomes. But which one can it be? It wasn't this one. Hmm. I think my fa- It wasn't this one. Hmm. It wasn't this one. Hmm. It wasn't this one. I guess it's just you and me now, Django. Well, look at that. Here's the key. It's always the one you try last. I can hardly wait to be back home. Finally. Oh, no. It's broken and stuck in the lock now. This rain barrel is home to a myriad of water fleas. Right. This will take care of the weeds. Oh no! It's jammed! On top of everything!
Dad's coat was ragged even back then. Hey! This is a picture of me! My father never allowed me to play with it, but I can't see him anywhere. <sighs> Hey, I remember now. This was the star in the second flashback. Oh yes. Uh. I can see the street. Are those red lights flashing in the distance? Hmm, locked. I think I could use some mud right now. I'll make an impression by pressing the individual parts into the clay. Great! It worked! Let's see what this old furnace can do. What worked one time? Okay, maybe this will help. I'm terribly sorry about this, but I have to melt down the master key again. Children! The gold is ready! Good idea! I'll pour the gold into the mold! I can do the dishes later.
Yippee! My own front door key! My father didn't want me to have one. That was to prevent you from escaping your room. After all, the same key fits the lock of your bedroom, too. This really is my old room. I've made it, at last. The only thing I need now is my diary. Do you remember where I used to keep it, Harvey? Strange. This memory is still hazy. But I think with all these items here, it should be easy to tempo morph to the past one last time. Oh yeah. We'll just hide the diary someplace where I'll be able to find it in the present. Or we could just have a look at it right away. Even better. What are we waiting for? Let's go. All right, then. Hang on. <laughs> I can't believe it. What am I doing wrong with you? Putting a lizard down the back of poor Alfred's shirt. Is this the way I raised you? <laughs> right. I can remember that. My dad grounded me. As if this door could ever contain us. We're only interested in the diary, Harv. Mr. Conrad! Mr. Conrad! Great. The return of the moron. What's the matter, Alfred? Will you punish Edna now? I was about to do that, yes. She has to be severely punished. The monster bit me in the shoulder. I won't be able to play the violin ever again. Rest assured that the punishment will fit the crime, Alfred. I hope so. My dad says your disciplinary actions for reprimanding this hyperactive lunatic... Thanks. ...are... Politely put, insufficient. Oh, so that's what he says. We should use a scorpion next time. If you don't mind, I would like to keep watch personally, just to make sure that her full penalty is served. Go ahead. And now come out of here, please. That stinking little weasel. Just ignore him. Let's just try to find the diary. Hey, there's my diary. Well, that's what I call easy. It's not like us to catch a break. Finally, I'll be able to remember. Yippee! Wait a second. When was this murder that my father is supposed to have committed? The Reverend said something about the 3rd of August. According to the diary, that's today. You've temple morphed me back to the day of the murder. Oops. No, no. This is, in fact, very good. Now we can prove his innocence firsthand. We'll just have to find him and never let him out of our sight. Let's get out of here. Finally, we can prove his innocence. This is already mine. Woodpeckers are really strange birds. So nitpicky. Maybe Edna can inspire the woodpecker somehow. Hey Edna, why don't you do what the woodpecker does? What do you mean? Shall I knock on the door to draw Alfred's attention? Oh. I was thinking you could bash your head against the wall, but your plan isn't bad either. No. What is it? Come on, Harvey. 
<laughs> Stop it, or... Hmm? Hey! Where did she go? Did she climb out the window? Okay, we'd better split up to find Mattis. I'll look upstairs, you look downstairs. And if I find him? You come and get me, of course. All right. Um, Edna? Yes, Harvey? What if Mattis really is a psychotic killer? Don't be ridiculous, Harvey. Mattis couldn't hurt a fly. It was just a thought. I didn't want to admit it to Edna. But I'm a little scared. What's up, Harvey? It's Mattis! He's making soup out of children! I don't know what you mean. I mean exactly what I just said! Mattis is the killer after all! Come on, let's go! But what's going on? I don't understand one single word. But he was here! He was standing at the oven and... Cooking children. Don't you realize how ridiculous that sounds? I... I must have been mistaken. Just go on looking, okay? What's going on here? This time, Mattis is burning children in the furnace! <sighs> no, he's not, Harvey. Come with me! I'll prove it to you! This is... I don't get it! Are you alright, Harvey? I'm beginning to be more concerned about you. How can I be so mistaken? Edna is the greatest! I don't understand. Mattis was here just a moment ago. No time for that. I need to find Mattis. An interesting subject, I'll admit. No time for that. I need to find Mattis. Can you lift me up a little? Sure. This time. I... I don't know yet. It was Mattis again. Come on. We'll both have a look. See? There's nothing there. I think we'd better call the whole thing off. It was an exhausting day. I might as well wait till tomorrow to restore my memory. The temple morphing doesn't seem to do you any good. No. I'll manage. Let's keep on looking. Help me, 
Edna, I'm hallucinating. What did you see this time? I saw Mattis with the Prince of Darkness, and they... Wait a second. Are those voices? There really is somebody on the porch. You stay here. I'll go have a look. I think the two of them would make a nice couple. I could well imagine a future for them. Your daughter, my son? Ha! One would have to recondition her thoroughly. Edna lacks all respect and is full of defiance. But aren't you on the verge of a breakthrough in the field of... What do you call it? Correction of character. That's exactly what your daughter needs. After one of those treatments, there might still be a way she could... Oh, um, could you excuse me for a moment? What's this all about, Edna? You know full well you're supposed to be in your room. I know, but... No buts. The doctor is right. You're in serious need of a correction of character. Please don't, Dad. I don't want to... We'll speak about this later. Right now, you go back to your room. I'm pretty mad at you, young lady. And by the way, try being nicer to Alfred, will you? Nicer to Alfred? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Shut up, Harvey. It's your fault, after all. What were all those lies supposed to mean anyway? I've been thinking it over. And basically, it's pretty simple. It's not my fault at all. I'm just a figment of your imagination, remember? So why wonder if I'm a little... Well, inaccurate every once in a while. Especially when it comes to observations you couldn't possibly have made yourself. Inaccurate is something different to completely and utterly absurd. Are you mad at me now? Oh, Harvey, I can't be mad at you. He's strangling me! Alfred, what are you doing? Give Harvey back to me! You'd like that, wouldn't you? Please, Alfred. I I'm really sorry. I, I... I've made a resolution to be nicer to you in the future. Stop pretending! You're not the least bit sorry, you little monster! You're completely crazy! Not only do you try to kill me with lizards, you also talk to that ragdoll rabbit! Now you're surprised, aren't you? I read your diary. Harvey this and Harvey that, and Alfred is always the stupid toad, isn't he? But that will soon stop. I'll tell it all to my dad, and they'll take that stupid rabbit away from you. They might even lock you up in Dad's asylum with the other loonies. That's where you belong in my book. Edna talks to her ragdoll rabbit! Edna talks to her ragdoll rabbit! Please, Alfred, don't! Help me, Edna! He's hurting me! What'll I do? Push him! What? Push him! Just push him! Push him down the stairs! can remember everything. It was me who killed Alfred. It... it was in the heat of the moment. I couldn't let him take Harvey away from me. Yes, it was you. You killed my son. Your father took the blame to protect you. I promised him that I would take care of you. But I only saw one way of doing that. I tried to create you anew, like a blank sheet of paper on which to start a new story, to erase all your tomfoolery. I nearly succeeded on many occasions, but you always found a way back to your memories. It's only now that I understand the root of the problem. Your ragdoll rabbit, Harvey, he is the anchor that moors you to the past. If you destroy him, 
You can finally live in peace without guilt. Don't listen to him! He'll destroy everything that is you! All your creativity! All that fun! Look, he's standing in the exact same spot his son was! Just a little push and we'll be free at last! He's the only one who knows of our guilt! Oh no. What will I do? Stop. 